Welcome to this training session on the Garmin Apollo GPS, hosted by yours truly, Major Updraft. In this video, we will be discussing maps and controls. Our objective in this training video is to understand the functions and available information on the four map chapters available on the Garmin GX series GPS. We will also learn how to maneuver our simulated aircraft in flight. There are four map chapters we'll be looking at. The split screen showing nav and moving map data together, the moving map only, the SAR map, and a setup chapter. First, the split screen. In my opinion, this is the best page to use for normal navigational purposes. It provides a basic map for situational awareness while giving us critical navigation data. We have the current next waypoint, in this case is Intersection Husky. We have the distance to that waypoint in nautical miles. We have our current ground speed. We have our bearing to the station. And we have our current track information. Both track and ground speed are affected by winds aloft. We have our distance off track, and we have the scale of the current map, which is 15 nautical miles. The soft keys here allow us to toggle on and off the stated waypoints as a means to declutter the map. We also notice a button with a number one on it. This indicates there's a second layer of soft keys. Here we see we can also toggle on and off the NDBs and user waypoints. There's also this scan button. When the scan soft key is engaged, the outer knob scrolls between available airports shown on the map. Since we only see one airport currently, let's zoom out with our inner knob till we have multiple airports shown. Now with the outer knob, you can see we can scroll between the different airports listed. The benefit is we can hit the direct button on any of these airports and it'll give us the opportunity to go direct. This could be valuable in an emergency situation where you unexpectedly needed to proceed direct to a nearby airport. Let's go back to the map page. We'll now scroll with the outer knob to the second chapter. One click to the right and we have the map only page. This has much of the same information while utilizing the entire screen for the map. Soft keys are all the same. The information displayed is quite similar. We have our next waypoint intersection Husky, our bearing to the station, our distance from the station, and the scale of the map. Missing from this page is our ground speed and track, those two elements affected by winds aloft. You also have to recall what the numbers mean since the labels are missing. Another right turn will bring us to the third map page, the SAR chapter. Notice the only change we see here is that the soft keys changed. This will always be true unless we have the grids turned on. So we look to our soft key and we see GRD for grid. Now we have that turned on, but our search grids will only be visible if we're zoomed in close enough to see them. So we'll take the small knob and let's zoom in. Starting at 30 miles out, we can see our four basic grids. Hit the grid button again and we have our second layer. This adds the grid number. The third layer adds the four grid quadrants. And the fourth layer, which we need to zoom in closer to see, adds the grid letters A, B, C, and D. So this is a decluttering function. Use it as necessary to get the information that you need. I personally like to have it on grid two. The mark soft key will be used to mark a position and will be demonstrated in later videos. The pat or pattern soft key is where we select from one of three search types. We have the parallel line, the creeping line, and the expanding square. To scroll these options, we use the inner knob. Garmin probably should have used the outer knob here to be consistent, but since the outer knob performs no function, there's little opportunity for confusion. Go back to the map by hitting the map button, and we'll make one click on the outer knob to the right to see our final map chapter. It is the map setup. 
This is where you can adjust the default settings related to use of the various maps. Note the diamond here in the bottom right hand corner informing us that there are additional pages. You should check out the information available on each page, but there are two pages I want to highlight here. If we click with the small inner knob one to the left, we see an important page. The map needs to be on, the grid type needs to be US instead of basic, our position needs to match the sectional from which we're working on. In this case, it's Atlanta. We can use soft keys to toggle these settings such in this case we can turn the star map off and back on or we can go hit the select button and then use the small knob to scroll back and forth. Lastly, maneuvering the simulated aircraft is quite simple. We use the up down keys on our keyboard to increase and decrease ground speed. As you can see with the up arrow I'm bringing our airspeed up and with a down arrow I bring it back down. To make course changes we can use the left or the right. Using the left key I'm turning to the left and vice versa with the right key. Altitude is not displayed or used on the simulator. I encourage you to subscribe to the Major Updraft channel in order to catch future training videos. Thanks for watching and remember Knowledge and proficiency promotes safe flying.